Hello guys, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day. So in this video today, I'm going to show you some question that our friend asked in the YouTube. They are asking about from Troy commented, can you explain about the wabak element for the device? So I'm not sure sure about the question. Maybe he or she asking about the wabak element in supercapacitor or device supercapacitor. So for example, uh, to make it clear, actually for three electrode system and two electrode system, you can run electrochemical impedance spectroscopy and measure the uh, what we call that the resistance by having the Nyquist plot. And the element in the Nyquist plot, you can have the series resistance, RS, the charge transfer resistance, RCT, and also the Warbuck element, which is the line either 45 degree, less than 45 degree, or more than 45 degree. So I do believe this question are asking more explanation on the Warbuck elements. So thank you for asking. Let us uh, answer the question briefly and also give some example. So basically, the topic that will be covered for this question is for basic EIS, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, and also some case study. So let's look at this Nyquist plus. This is the example, the picture that you can get from the literature. So what happened is when we are running our um, our EIS, they will scan from high frequency. So for example, in this case, one kilohertz, they will scan from high frequency to low frequency. So you can observe at high frequency is your RS, your RS that measure the electrolyte resistance. For example, RS is not uh, limited to the electrolyte resistance. It's actually a total resistance. It's combining the electrolyte resistance, charge transfer resistance, and also the resistance of the electrolyte. That's the meaning of the RS, the total resistance in your system. Then at the middle frequency region, you can see here your charge transfer resistance between your electrode and also electrolyte. So because it is a movement of electron from your electrolyte to your electrode surface. Then you can get your wabak at very low frequency. And depend on the application, some application does not have a wabak. For example, diacetylsalicylic cell is very rare case to have a wabak because the process is a very fast process. You cannot observe the wabak. So this straight line, what we call that uh, either 45 degree, less than 45 degree, which is near to perpendicular or more than 45, maybe six, maybe 60 degree, maybe 90 degree. So what is the indicator if that case happened? So you need to understand first which one is which. So remember the scan, the resistance arise when you scan from high frequency is your rs in the middle one the semicircle this up we call that the rct charge transfer resistance and the line 45 degree more than 45 or less than 45 we call that warbuck line warbuck element so this is the circuit that you can mimic when you are fit your circuit maybe using exact sim software or using the nova software you can also get this circuit that mimics your eis the real process so this is the equivalent circuit okay let's uh, before that let's look at the study let's see some theory in, in eis analysis the wabak element is often re represented by a diagonal line so that uh, occurs in the Nyquist plus uh, is present the characteristic that can provide insight to the kinetic of ion transport. When you are talking about kinetic of ion transport, you're going to see whether your ion transport will be faster or slower. Okay, that's the main point we want to highlight. So actually for Wabak, it's quite simple actually. Two things you need to observe. So number one is the length of your Wabak line. This is your Wabak line, so you want to observe the length. So let me change to the pointer option. Okay, this is the Wabak line. You want to observe the length. Is it your Wabak line is shorter or longer? 
So what happened was indicator if your Warburg line is shorter and what happened if your Warburg line is longer. So it's quite easy actually. If your Warburg line is shorter, means your diffusion of electron, movement of electron, the electron transport is faster, means your resistance is low. So we want our composite, either binary composite, ternary composite should be better compared to our pristine composite. That's why our Warburg line should be shorter. That's number one. Number two is the degree of your Warburg line. Whether it's 45 degree, is perpendicular, less than, more than 45, or less than, is perpendicular, less than 45, near straight line, and also is 90 degree, more than 45. So what happened in terms of degree? If your Warburg line is 45 degree and below, 45 degree and below means that it's closer to the Y axis, means that your electron transport is faster and less resistant, means that it is very good characteristic to be a conductor. If your Warburg line is perpendicular, your material is very good conductor. So if 45 degree, acceptable less than 45 degree is better if your warburg line is more than 45 degree maybe 60 degree maybe 80 degree 90 degree means that your resistance is bigger uh, so you can refer the citation from the other paper you can say that when the warburg line more than 45 degree means that the electron transport will be slower so basically, that's two important things that I want to highlight. Let's see some case study. Okay, this is uh, some example from online also. You can see two semicircles here, maybe in the case of two interface. Maybe they have a binary system. Maybe they are system uh, in different application. For example, in Dyson's Dysolazal, they can occur two or three semicircles. But our main point today is about Warburg line. So see, this Warburg line is roughly around 45 degree. It's a good characteristic of the material, indicating a very good electron ion transport. Okay, next, when you compare the example in the middle, whereby they have a ternary, ternary composites. Now you can zoom if you want ternary composites. So they see that the best composite is the ternary. You can see the Warburg line is shorter. And also the Warburg line, first of all, is shorter Warburg line. And when you compare to the rest, here the number one, the degree close to the perpendicular means that uh, it, it is a double edge sword. When you add something, you can reduce the, you can increase the electron transport, but at the same time, the resistance slowly increase because more material is added. Okay, some trend, both could be positive. You can have a shorter Warburg line, and that Warburg line can be close to the y-axis. Means that the resistance is lower. So it depends on your experiment. See the case study number three. So the case study number three, okay, composite A is better because short Warburg line and the Warburg line is closer to the y-axis. So in the end, it depends on your experiment and your results. So I think I already answered your question. So I will recap. So just focus on the two things. The number one thing is the length of the Warburg line. Number two is the degree of your Warburg line. By the end, you can do your experiment very good. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Bye. See you again.